Greetings, church. This past Sunday was Pentecost, and that's the day when we celebrate the birthday of the church, when the Holy Spirit comes in wind and fire and lands upon that gathered community with power and strength and vision, but not so they could just remain gathered. It was so they could scatter and be a force in the world. And I think about that when I think about what's going on with our world right now. Um, and the we're all pummeled with images, and I know it breaks your heart just as it breaks my heart. And, you know, seeing the, the peaceful protest becoming violent, or, or that video, that video. I was reminded of a quote by Dietrich Bonhoeffer when he said this, silence in the face of evil is itself evil. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak, not to act is to act. I admit that these last few days I've struggled with knowing what to do, what to say, even how to feel. What happened to George Floyd, a child of God, an image bearer of his creator, it was tragic and should never have happened. So what do we do about that now? And I would suggest the first thing we do is confess how we are complacent or complicit and as individuals and as the church. You see, we pledge our allegiance to one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all, but that justice for all is not happening. It certainly didn't happen for George Floyd. We dare not remain silent. In fact, our denomination in 1983 wrote this incredible statement of faith, and when it speaks of the work of the Holy Spirit, I think the words are quite relevant today. Listen. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ as Lord and Savior, to unmask idolatries in church and culture, to hear the voices of peoples long silenced, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. Boy, those are bold words, much needed, that we would witness, witness to what our faith tells us, that, that we would unmask. And, you know, what is it that the Spirit's calling us to unmask now? What lies need to be revealed so that we can speak into the, the truth of our faith? And, and the to hear the voices of people long silence. I mean, we are hearing some voices now, and some of those voices are even speaking to us from the grave. And what does it mean that we might work together in the power of the Holy Spirit toward that ideal of liberty and justice for all, not just some, but for each and every child of God? Like me, you may say, but I don't know how to do that. I don't know what to say, I don't, I, and I'm afraid, and, and I'm confused. And for good reason, because on our own, we can do little, if anything, but we are not on our own. The same Spirit who came upon those gathered 2,000 years ago is the same Spirit who comes upon us with power and ignites us to be his body, his presence in this broken and fearful world. And the way we access that power, the way we have the courage is to pray, very clearly to pray without ceasing. And, and that then, when we do so, gives us the courage to live our prayers. And only when we live our prayers can we live into the kind of world that God calls us his followers to help create I know this is a pretty heavy message for today because these are weighty times. So let me just end with this. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And have courage. I love you, my friends, and miss you.